yeah, in terms of like how it works, because we, yeah, well, not so much where it is. How things work at some time, some time as possible during the extra interactions. Okay. Remember, I discussed about the five different types of scatter radiations uh, Casper, constant, proelectric, cap reduction, and for disintegration. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about each of these. Starting with the classical, which is the weakest type of scatter radiation to the strongest type of scatter radiation, which is for the disintegration. Generally, the weaker type of scatter radiation, the weak energy interacts with the whole atom. As energy gets stronger, it interacts with the nucleus, from the whole atom down to the nucleus of the atom. Talking about the region of here, and that's how it actually creates the for disintegration. From weak energy, primary beam, interact with the whole atom, that is the classical, to a high energy beam, which interacts straight to the nucleus. Okay, classical uh, scatter radiation. This is interaction between, as mentioned, uh, between low energy, extra beam, that's a primary beam, and the uh, whole atom. Classical scatter radiation generally occurs when the setting is about below or around 10 kV uh, setting, energy. With classical scatter radiations, there's really no energy loss between the original beam and scatter radiation beam because of such a low energy level. The extra photon comes in, interacts with the realm, have the same energy as the scatter radiations. Generally, remember the scatter radiation is much weaker than the original beam, but in this case, because the beam is so weak, it just can produce the same amount of scatter radiation. So the wavelength then of the original beam, incident beam, is the same as. Okay, so that, that's what that means right there, then, right? Hmm? That's what that means right there. The last statement is that the. Yeah. Does, they don't change really? Yeah, so there's really no. Because there's really no energy. It's already, it's already low as it is. Yeah. So uh, the original beam has the same amount as the scattered beam. So the wavelength of the original beam is the same as the scattered beam. So there's no ionization occur when there's interactions with the classical um, radiation. Other names for classical that are being used, coherent, is one of the most common names instead of using classical. Um, relay, unmodified radiation, scatter radiation, and then Thompson scatter radiations. I don't know why they have so many different names for this one. Just going to research it. But those are different names that are used for the same time. Maybe it was discovered by same different people at the same time. Same time. <laughs> Alright, so here's an animation of classical coming in, yay, and coming out. Woo! Yeah. Same wavelength. Alright, content or modify as another name. Uh, scatter radiations. Now, just interactions between moderate energy, X-ray, and the atoms. Uh, since the energy is much higher, the original beam, the interaction occur at the outer shell of the electrons. Whereas classical, the energy weak, it occur with the whole entire atom. Interaction with the whole atom does occur. The interaction at the outer shell. Um, with these interactions, um, the energy absorbed from the outer shell, the outer shell of the atom we have too much energy and we escape from uh, that atom. So there's ionization in this process. That's the and when it escapes, it produces scatter radiation. And the photons, the scatter radiation, can direct in any direction, going whatever direction it goes, depending on where it goes. With classical, it goes in the same direction? It doesn't change direction? Or is it 
Uh, Costco, yeah, it could go to any investment too. But okay. with Photon, uh, this tech company, it actually could go back to original oh. source. So it was what I call backscatter. So the Photon, let's say I can actually go back to the original source. What I want you guys to remember with this is that with content or modified scatteration, it's responsible for a vast majority of radiations reaching the image receptor, which causes unwanted radiographic fog uh, density. And also, vast contribute to mostly to occupational exposure to the to the radiograph, uh, radiographer, to the X-ray tank. Content is responsible for a vast majority uh, of our exposure. Sometimes we have to be in a room with patients due to philosophy <coughs> exposure. Uh, so patient is the number one source of scatter content radiations. So as we work with our patient in the philosophy room, the patient is killing us. <laughs> Unwanted uh, density or contrast on extra film. So, by giving too much fog, it gives more contrast, which gives more unwanted shades of gray and more density. We don't need. Does an ionization chamber like fire cancer? Ionization chamber? Yeah. Uh, that's also dependent. Yeah, that's true. But then, no, because no, after it interacts with the patient, it produces those kind of radiation. That changes just. Um, make the image better in terms of how it, the setting is. Because uh, it stops the exposure when it's reaching exposure, like length, right? Yeah, it does, but just but it's got radiation. <coughs> it doesn't stop that. Oh, okay. It's got it's got the primary. Mm. Yeah, I think <laughs> basically it's like no matter what, there's always going to be scattered radiation, like, no matter what. So here's a content. <laughs> yes, fine. I mean, not that big. Electrons and then use content. So it only knocks it out while going in. It doesn't go. Uh, it's, it's going in. Interact with the outer shell. Mm -hmm. The outer shell absorbs those energy. Have too much energy there to escape. When it escape, as it escape, it produces energy from the star. Oh, okay. For electric. Uh, this is where the original beam is completely absorbed and it's absorbed mainly at the inner shell of the atom at during the interaction. So from Casco, uh, the interaction is whole atom. Compton interaction with the outer shell, as the energy gets stronger, it then gets closer to the nucleus. So here it interacts with the inner shell of the electron. The energy shell absorbs the energy. As it said, that energy, it then uh, the uh, electrons can escape the binding en the binding energy of that shell. As it's escape, it then produces scatter radiation in the form of electric. And remember, when I talk about how is it in the shell electrons can be moved, what happened? Other electrons will move in. Right. As you move, it will also produce more uh, scatter radiation. So, photoelectric is a type of what? It's Characteristic like radiation, right? In, in form of something else, scatter radiation. So, the only difference between those two is that characteristic is in the primary. Yeah, and then this is also producing 
to this guy. Well, this is form of characteristic in secondary study language. In general, with a uh, high atomic number or such matter element, it will be used to produce more four electric absorption or more four electric uh, scatter radiation. With content scatteration, the technologists get most of the radiations. And for electric, the patients get most of this. receive more for electric effect in this type of scatter radiation. Pair production is pair production scatter radiation or secondary radiations occur at the setting of 1.2 mega electron volts or higher. Because it occur with 1.2 mega electron volts, pair production usually does not occur in diagnostic X-ray. It usually occurs in the radiation curve, that's when because it uses it in the M mega. Well, in diagnostic, that's when we use only use up to what? KV. Mm -hmm. With pair productions, uh, the high energy comes very close to the nucleus. So it goes beyond the inner shells, but it comes interact very close to the nucleus. Not, not to the nucleus, but close to the nucleus. As it interacts close to the nucleus, it begins to lose energy. Um, this loss in the energy then produces two types of electrostatic charges. One is for negatrons and one is for positrons. In regular physics class, it's normally referred as matter and antimatter. But in this class, we call it negatron and positron. I don't know why. And of course, in element 5, negatron means negative charge and positron is positive charge. And these two types of charges interact. The negatron actually absorbs very fast to uh, the atoms. The positron then interact with the other electrons. In this interaction, both the positron and the electron combine, and then they eliminate each other. As they eliminate each other out, it then produces two types of photons, each having half the value of the second, which is 1.02. So it has to to two photons, scattering called which, here, which is about 0.51 mega electron volt each. And then we have total disintegration. Occur when the energy setting, the primary beam, is about 10 mega electron volt or higher. And again, since in the mega electron volt, it only occurs mainly in radiation therapy instead of diagnostic experience. The high beam, because of the high energy, the wave plane is very small. This small allows the very smallness of the beam of the wave plane allowed to go straight directly to the nucleus of the atom. In this case, could be, in this case, the tissue atom. As the beam interact with the nucleus, the nucleus will absorb all those energy, which cause the nucleus to be in excitation mode. So it's vibrating really fast. As that source, it then breaks down, and then it disintegrates and collapses and explodes, and that's how we die. 
And then take my effective to consider. Uh, KB determines the interact what kind of interaction occurs. Having high KB gives a decrease for electric absorption because most of this goes through uh, the patient. So um, more penetrating and less body interactions. However, it sort of produces a lot of content interactions after you go through the patient and interact with them. Low KB in, uh, increases for electric absorption. So, more of the KV will be absorbed by the patients. So increasing patient levels. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have no control what KV we have to set because it's based on the anatomy that we have to uh, shoot. Uh, so some KV based on top exam, chest ratio, and x ray, and is that desire of their penetrations and the film contrast we needed. And again, sometimes we have no control of how. how High or lower KB setting can have because of the anatomy of the shoe. So sometimes the patient has to absorb them or we absorb them. And I think that's the last slide. Mm -hmm. Alright, time to move. It's 6.30, come back at 6.45. Mm -hmm. 